I'm seeing the same issues on a lot of these old Vivint solar panel installations. We have issues with the attachments, inverter and the electronics, communications, old roofs, and wearing out and leaking. First, I'm going to look at the attachments. So most of these systems are attached with a relless system made by a company called EcoFasten and the product line is Rocket. I'll go ahead and link the manufacturer uh, below so you can get additional resources on buying replacement parts or manufacturer specifications outside of what I'm talking about. But here's some common issues right here. So right there, I haven't touched this system. If you just zoom in right there, you might be able to see it, but those clamps are not tightened to the panel. It clamps to the frame of the solar panel and then bridges to the frame so that the frames on the panel is kind of the structural part of the system. And then these attachments just hold the frames together. Well, you see that a lot where that isn't tightened. And you see it a lot of times, sometimes on the top row, um, say on this side, well, maybe one of these is loose and it's fallen off. Working with these systems, you need like an impact driver and a deep socket, half inch deep socket. That's going to adjust this loosen height loosen and this is loosen the bracket and that is a height adjustment and then you can see that little bolt down there that little bolt is actually a uh vertical um like an up and down um adjustment on it another thing i see that i hate it's a trim piece that goes on the bottom of the install these panels are installed so you do the bottom row first they fit in the brackets and then you put the brackets on the top row and then you do the top row down. So it's hard to remove bottom than top. You usually remove top than bottom and you put it in bottom than top. But if you go around here and you say loosen that bracket a little bit, if you loosen these and it depends on which model, you either loosen the bracket itself or you loosen these top screws. loosen these top screws enough that this will pull out you can pull off this trim piece it's like they're painted they're not like anodized and the paint on all of them starts to chip after like five years and so what you can do is um, you know you could work your way along your gutter loosen those bolts and pull each of these trim pieces off you can pull all those off and you can take them down paint them let them dry and put them back on and then the system's not going to look as like it's just it looks like shit on the roof it's gonna make it look better so i'm gonna do that with this one okay so once you've looked at like all the structural issues with these systems the skirt needs painted um some of these attachments need to be tightened down um that have fallen off or been loose the next thing that i see for common issues is solar panels being installed on old roofs that should have been replaced before they were installed. So in this situation, we have a bunch of leaking going on here. So I'm taking these panels off so that the roofers can come in and make repairs. Um, this is a very common situation. So this, it's attached with a lag screw to the rafter that runs up and down on this roof. Flashing goes underneath. Um, this flashing, sometimes they cut the shingles they cut the shingles right here and sometimes they'll have damage on the shingles around this flashing that could potentially leak i removed this top row so you can see a little bit better so essentially what goes on with the rail system is you have to have your attachments land exactly where the edges of the panels are so if those attachments land right on a course it may be a risk of flashing it too low and having water leak or flashing it too high, extra work. And then as I've seen a lot of times, the shingles just won't look great when you notch them to slide in your bracket. Yeah, like this right here, that's a perfect example actually. So you have a break in a shingle right here. And then you have this notched like unnecessarily high. And then right here, it's like if that shingle doesn't, if this flashing right here, doesn't go up past here you have potential of water to like going under or something weird right there so i don't i don't necessarily love how that was done 
um, but I see that a lot. Um, and then the other thing I see is when they pry up shingles, if they damage the shingle at all, like right there, you see that? That's a hole. And I don't think there's a flashing underneath that. I don't think it goes up that high. But if when they're flashing it, they damage the shingle line when they're breaking it and pulling out nails in order to get the flashing under, sometimes these shingles will blow off or they'll be damaged and have potential holes um, on them. So I've already turned the system off, which you do by flipping a DC toggle switch and turning the AC side off and then um, checking the voltage. So this system's equipped with rapid shutdown. It's completely turned off. There's no electricity on the roof. So I'm gonna start removing some panels and kind of show you how I do it. I'm loosening all the hardware on these and then the solar panels are connected with these PV wires. Um, you can just disconnect them with your hand, but I have like a little tool where you kind of slide it in here and you can pry them apart. But one of the problems I see is the wire management. If you just look at this, these wires are just kind of coiled up just like slapping on the roof with a couple zip ties wires are just kind of on these little zip clips that don't really hold them up very well um so i'm gonna redo that because that to me just i don't know there's not a great way to do it so i can't i can't like shit talk too much because it's a hard job and there's not really great tools for doing it but it, you can do better than this so i'm gonna fix all this if you have wires um touching your roof um i'll link a few cool products that you can use to kind of like pick them up like if i just look across here you can see the home run just kind of dangling across there Sometimes you'll see electrical issues inside these boxes. Um, just to verify, I did turn off electricity to the system. All right, looks like we have some terminal blocks in here that were not used. 
and then everything's just in wire nuts. Um, circuits are, I'm gonna pull around on these since I know it's all off. Nothing's burnt up, no apparent problems. Um, I might actually just switch over to those terminal blocks. And on that little gem right there. So these terminal blocks, I see a lot of issues with them because people like just strip back the wire poorly. Like look how far that's stripped back. It's ridiculous. So I'm gonna redo these uh, terminal blocks here. I don't know why it pisses me off so much, but like I hate how these things chip. They just look so bad. I'm like, I would have rather them just be silver. Like some products, I think you have like a mill finish. It's just silver. Then you can have like maybe a clear anodized that will protect it, make it last a long time, not rust. And then you can have a black anodized. I hate anything on the roof that isn't anodized or stainless steel. Like all of this stuff is just, just garbage. So I'm gonna try to paint these up and make them look a lot better. Let's talk about the inverters. Um, generally, Vivint and these big box solar companies have stuck to the main inverter manufacturers out there, which the two top in the US is Solar Edge and Enphase. With both of these systems, I see problems with communications. Essentially what happens is these systems communicate through your Wi-Fi, an independent cell kit, or they were hardwired with an uh, ethernet cable. Most of the time they're on the Wi-Fi or the cell kit. The cell kit, like recently we had a change in network. So we're now on 10 million G or 6G or 5G or whatever. 3G no longer works. So if you have a cell kit and it's 3G, your data has probably ran out and it probably doesn't communicate anymore. So that needs to be replaced. Um, a lot of times when there's a Wi-Fi kits, you'll change internet providers or move your router or something will get unplugged and the system will need to be reset and it won't communicate either. So the best option is to hardwire it, but it can be a pain in the butt. I got some videos on kind of how to do that that you can check out on my channel. I would recommend hardwiring what, whatever inverter system you have. But here's your problems. If you have an issue with your system, you're not gonna know because you can't monitor it. And if the manufacturer needs to send you a warranted part out, they won't because they don't know you have an issue. And along with that, they didn't have monitoring to your system, so they don't know why the issue happened. If something went bad, why your system was producing power, the manufacturer will have that data saying, oh, an optimizer went out, oh, the inverter failed. And they can literally log into your system, run diagnostics remotely, verify the issue, and just ship you out a replacement part. But none of that can happen if you don't have an internet connection to your, your solar panels. Um, so that's a common problem I see. Uh, this system was Solar Edge and it has power optimizers on it. It's very common for Solar Edge optimizers to go out. If you have a system, you at least have one or two that'll go out throughout the lifetime of the system. It's just inevitable. So you need to be able to get a replacement one, get on the roof, take the panel off, replace that optimizer, and then reset it up and everything. If you have an optimizer or even an in-phase microinverter that's not working on your roof, you have like one panel that's not producing power. You could have your system running for years and not know that three of your panels aren't working and you're getting you know 10% less electricity from your system and then you have a small electric bill. So that's a common issue we see. Another one is with Solar Edge, you have a, a central inverter that all the optimizers send power to. If that goes out, which they do sometimes, they have like a 10 to 15 year warranty on them. If that goes out, your entire system's off. So time and time again, I'll see people who have that Solar Edge inverter go out. It'll be a couple months down the road. They'll be like, oh, my power bill's kind of high because you're eating your credits, you're not producing power. And then it'll be like, oh, my power bill's like 300 bucks a month. And then they'll go out and see, oh, my solar panels have been down for three months. And now I've used up all my credits I build up with a power company. I now have an electric bill. And now I have to like try to find somebody to fix it, order in a part. Can I even get a part? And this might be pushed out for months, if not even years, a year or so trying to get a replacement part and getting their system back on. And you might be stuck with a loan and a solar panel system that doesn't work in a power. Um, on your hardware, you can see some kind of brand and you can go on Google and you can call them and say, hey, look, 
uh, hey, Solar Edge, I have a Solar Edge inverter. I don't have access to my monitoring. Can you help me set this up? And they'll need the serial number on the side of the unit and you they'll help you set it up. It shouldn't be something too hard to do or you can have a technician like myself come out and just do it for you. Thanks for watching this video. Um, I, I hope this was helpful information. Uh, just as a reminder, there's three things that I would recommend you do. One is call whoever installed your solar panels. In this case, it's Vivint. There's a phone number on the inverter. That phone number redirects to Sunrun. Call up, call them up and say, hey, I don't have access to my monitor or I don't think my system's working and see if they'll send somebody out. See if they'll give you resources, help you out in any way. If that's a dead end, if that manufacturer's out of business or they won't do anything for you, um, the next thing you wanna do is call the manufacturer of the device on the side of your home whether it's Enphase or Solar Edge or SMA or Delta or whatever brand of inverter or power electronics is on your system, call them. All of these brands have like active tech support agents and customer service agents that can talk to you and you can say, hey, I don't have access. Can you check to see if there's an internet connection? Can you help me troubleshoot it? Can you get me a login? Can you do something? And usually you can get some help there. And then the last, the last one here, is if you have a system that's not working and it's a dead end with your inverter manufacturer and it's a dead end with your uh, installer, if you have a loan on your system, call the lender. Um, I've seen a lot of situations where people are paying their power bill and they're paying a loan for their solar panels and they called up their lender and said, hey, look, my installer went bankrupt. My warranty, it just doesn't, isn't there anymore because of that. Um, I'm paying my power bill and for this loan what can you do? And a lot of times the lenders will actually help out more than what you think because they don't want customers to default on their loans. They want the systems to keep producing in order to keep making money on these loans. A lot of them have like built-in programs to help like repair systems, to help make sure they're working um, insurance programs um, or sometimes sold with it. And that can be a great option. Um, man, one more option for you might even be homeowner's insurance. A lot of times when there's roof leaks or house fires or something really bad on a system and it's like a total loss, um, you can go to the, your homeowner's insurance and talk to those guys and see if they cover the solar panels or will help out with an independent contractor doing the repairs. Um, so hopefully that's helpful information. Thanks for checking out my channel and supporting my brand.